Hey everyone, we're talking about shame. Pastor Nathan here. Uh, this last weekend for our adult Bible class, we're talking about um, Esther chapter 7. And as Pastor John and I were recording last week's um, Bible study for the, the online portion of of our community, one of the things that, that sort of jumped out to me and then we had a chance to discuss on that video was human response to shame and guilt. That is the consequences of our actions, whether intended or, or unintended, um, particularly when those things um, like, you know, reflect badly upon us, hence the, the shame and the, and the guilt. The, uh, the four responses are um, fight, run or flight. You may have heard that in different terminology, fight or flight. Another response is blaming. And then the, the final one really kind of unlocked for the follower of Jesus Christ is um, reflecting on, on our actions. Like, did we, you know, really sin? Did we really, you know, hurt our neighbor? Did we sin against God? Did we, um, did, was it our fault that we mess up? And then repenting either to a person um, or to God. That is saying, you know, I was wrong. I'm turning around here from what I did. So we'll just kind of take those in order just briefly because the, the book of Esther, chapter 7, really kind of reflects some of those things and gives some great, great pictures of it. The, the king, um, when he hears that Haman is, has, has um, set out a, a ethnic cleansing campaign that includes his, his new queen, or his newish queen, she's been queen for a few years now, uh, he gets so mad that he walks off. And one of those things that we see there, maybe that he's, he's got some shame and some, some guilt. Another, you know, that's one, re one response where he kind of runs from it. Um, the second thing that, that response we see is, is actually Haman's. Um, Haman's response is to fight, to fight for his life. Um, the, these two responses are, are not new. I mean, Haman goes to Queen Esther and is pleading for his life. Xerxes walks off trying to figure out you know how, how to go about handling this because he was complicit in it I mean he 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 said okay you know Haman do whatever you want and he didn't you know push him too much and he took a bribe and maybe he's feeling some some guilt over that or some shame humanity's been 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 fighting and running and you know from from God and from each other for a long time when it comes to shame and guilt I mean there are people who fight who say it's not my fault um, at, you know, I, I had to do it or I was right, you were wrong. Um, they kind of like push their agenda and, and so forth. And they, and they fight God even. They say God's wrong and, and God's, God's the one that needs to change, not them. Um, the second thing is like that, that running thing. Adam and Eve done that, did that in the garden uh, when God comes, in, you know, in the cool of the day, Genesis chapter 3. Adam and Eve hiding, hiding them, themselves, their, their, you know, their bodies and themselves from God. And they're running because they're ashamed and they're afraid. And we see also in, in the garden, Adam and Eve, where they blame, where, where, where Adam blames Eve and God. Eve blames the snake and God and uh, ends up being a not great thing for any of them. You want, I kind of wonder what would have happened if they would have reflected and repented right then. Um, would that have changed sort of the outcome? So those are sort of three ways that we respond to shame and guilt and to the consequences, whether intentional or unintentional, of our actions that, that we're not proud of, or maybe we've been called out on, or maybe we're facing the consequences of, the not good consequences of. There is a fourth one um, where we reflect on our actions and then we repent. Uh, if, you, if you listened to the, the Bible study this last weekend, you know that that we do that response kind of weekly. If you're at a church, either online or in person, uh, we do this from the front, confession absolution, every single Sunday. We invite God into our presence, we sing, boom, we're right into confession, where we're acknowledging, where we're reflecting on our actions that we, that we have not done as God would want us to do. And in fact, um, you know, we, we've, we recognize that not only have we um, done things that have, you know, that God disapproves of, that have broken his moral law, that are not reflective of, of him in this world. But chances are we fought him, we've blamed others, and we've run uh, from our, the consequences of those actions. And so, um, for the follower of Jesus, for you and for me, uh, our, our responsibility is to reflect and repent um, when it comes to our actions with others that are not good, and then our actions towards each other 
um, and towards God, where we need to, you know, see ourselves as we are, see the, see ourselves, you know, through the lens of truth, and then you know bring that before God. Because the, the good thing for us is this: is that um, we get to to do that, and then we are kind of, you know, for those who those who are, who are repenting and, and turning around, God has said He's He will forgive, that He will uh, relent from punishing, and that because of Jesus Christ, we have a a safe and secure hope in the future, um, then that frees us also up because that future is is secure. Then we can go and do the same for the people around us and to the people around us that we can repent where we need to and uh, ask for forgiveness where we need to instead of fighting or running or blaming the people around us when we are the ones truly at fault. So anyhow, hope that's helpful for you. Uh, we'll, we'll talk again soon.